Hello everybody, welcome to Stonks Music. My name's Ollie and today we're going to be having a look at Autopan in this week's deep dive session. Let's go! So here we are again, back in the Ableton manual. Let's have a look at what they've got to say. Auto pan. Note, the auto pan effect is not available in the light edition. So sorry guys, only available if you have standard or sweet. The auto pan offers LFO driven manipulation of amplitude and panning for creating automatic panning, tremolo and amplitude modulation and beat synchronized chopping effects. That's what we use it for quite a bit. Autopan's LFOs modulate the amplitude of the left and right stereo channels with sine, triangle, sawtooth down, or random waveforms. The shape control pushes the waveform to its upper and lower limits, hardening its shape. The waveform can be set to normal or invert. Use invert to, for example, create the saw up waveform from the saw down waveform. So you can invert your waveforms. LFO speed is controlled with the rate control, which can be set in terms of hertz. Rate can also be synced to the song's tempo. Though both LFOs run at the same frequency, the phase control lends the sound stereo movement by offsetting their waveforms relative to each other. Set this to 180 and the LFO will be perfectly out of phase, 180 degrees apart, so that when one reaches its peak, the other is at its minimum. Phase is particularly effective for creating vibrato effects. The offset shifts the start point of each LFO along its waveform. The device's influence on incoming signals is set with the amount control. Okay, so there's not too much here compared to uh, the other ones. We've got no quick tips, no weird buttons don't do what you think they do. Um, it's quite a simple little effect. So let's jump into Ableton and have a look. Right, so here we are back in Ableton. I've grabbed one of the sounds from my sample packs. It's just a nice... Big, sorry wave sound that I made before. Chuck that in a sampler. So we've got this up here. And then our auto filter. So, as out of the box, this is how it comes. So we turn our amount up, this is what you get. So the blue is left headphone or speaker and the orange is the right headphone or speaker. So straight away you can see here with the rate there one is up when the other one is down. So if we turn the rate up, we're just going to get it faster. And that's a really nice one for kind of build ups and, um, and breakdowns and transitions. So if we just control shift M, I will chuck a G in, uh, shift down to make it an octave down. And then we get our rate here and we will just automate it, start fast and go slower. Like this. Boom, and then into a drop. So let me just duplicate that quickly. So that's one way we could do it. The next thing we could do, instead of using it as a pan, is turning this phase to make the LNR the same in phase with each other rather than out of phase. So when one ups, the other one's down. Instead, we'll make them both do exactly the same thing. So instead of panning from left to right, left to right, now it's just going to turn on and off. So let's have a quick listen to that. Which is quite nice. And then both of them together actually probably sound quite nice as well. Tempted to take this one an octave up. Bang! It's a nice kind of like lead up into a drop. Um, get those nice transitions. So let's duplicate it one more time. Let's come over here. So now we can have a mess around with the uh, shape. So we can change it from wave to square just by hardening the shape. Um, and let's have a quick listen. So you can hear that's much more on and off than this one here. It's got the shoo to it. 
that's with our shape knob here, but we also have these different shapes down here. So let's just turn the shape knob down and we'll go to triangle down and see what we've got. That's got a nice kind of tink tink clank to it, which is nice. I'd say you could also probably slow that down a bit, get right down here. Something like that. Um, I'm going to duplicate you again. I'm just duplicating it so you guys have all these uh, versions you can look at. So next up, we can set the phase to spin. And what that does now, you can see it keeps one of them in place and twists the other one. So rather than with phase, you can see it moves the whole thing in and out. Spin, it squishes it down. So you can kind of realign some of them. You see here. Just delete this. Uh, Automation, right? Delete automation. And again, this is quite a nice one if we just do the rate coming down a little bit. We have the spin starting off, starting on, sorry, and slowly going off. It's just going to make your track kind of feel like it's losing its way a bit. Just kind of pulls things together. I love these techniques before drops just to kind of make the listener a little more confused as to what's going on. I mean, it's really obvious when you go in, boom, boom, booga, dooga, 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 drop. So it's quite nice sometimes just to throw people out, get them, just get them a little bit more confused. All right, let's duplicate again. And this time I'm going to delete automation on both of these and we'll have a little look at the sync. So let me turn the rate down so we can see what's going on. We've got our triangle here. Offset can let us have an upwards or downwards, you can see. So we'll start with this here. We'll take this to uh, one bar. Let's see what we've got. That's quite nice. It's got a nice uh, build to it. What I'd be tempted to do, let's take that to quarters. twice again it's just about giving that weird little movement so let's go to the phase and we'll just have it go all the way down and then it's going to hang there for a bit and go all the way back up and over the same period there we go so what we get is this So it starts in the same place, ends in the same place, but has these kind of weird movements in the middle. So we have the width here instead of the phase, and you can see that's just giving us more, if I slow so you can see what's going on, loads of crazy steps. And the shape hardens them, brings them right to the top. So let's have a little... So that sounds a lot more random, it's a lot less usable in my opinion, but still, I mean, if you were to automate through some of these um, and move the width around a bit, I'd probably say this is this is getting less musical. Um, we'll say the shape will go up so it will get a bit more crushy crushy. Let's make the offset change as well, up and then back down. Um, let's see what we've got. So that really feels like everything's starting to break. The kind of thing I'd do there, grab an auto filter on that too. Automation, bring that up. So it's like. And probably automate this dry wet as well. This would be sick before a drop, in my opinion. So instead of going, boonga, 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 bam, 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 into your drop, 
I find it really nice sometimes to just lull out false sense of security. And then you'd come in with a big old, and it'd feel like it's going out, 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 away, and then slamming you straight back in the middle. I suppose, actually, one thing I will talk about, these are all kind of creative uses you can use here. I do have my sub bass. So, in the white noise section, we have this auto pan. Let me just show you this. So this is some white noise being uh, created by operator. And I have EQ'd it and saturated. So EQ just to get those high bits, saturator to uh, just kind of mess it up a bit. But this auto filter gives us all of the um, fluttery movement. And I use this just to kind of beef up my sub basses and give them some of that high end sparkle. So over here we've got set to root note. So in this case, we have a G. So if we want to grab span, G1, 50 hertz. Okay, so let's set it to 50. And now, turn that off. that's another thing you can do with the auto pan is matching your rate amount to the root note of your song to give you the right frequency of overtones to be um, pumping up and, and rasping up so a shorter episode today I think guys because auto pan is quite a simple one but still we've got a lot we can do with it we've got um, a lot of these kind of transitional effects and stuff like that um, the amount the rate the phase the shape got this spin function and rate or Hertz mode Thanks for tuning in guys. That was this week's episode of Deep Dive. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about Autopan. Next week we've got Beat Repeat, so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell if you want to see more videos, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, bye.